Well, welcome to the, what is this, May 8th edition of the Daily Dose of Reality Relationship Advice. My name is Deborah Cooper, as you know, oh, over there on the screen. Um, and I've been uh, in the advice business since the early 1990s. So um, it's been a while. I guess I'm a lot older than I look. <laughs> I Actually, I started doing this when I was 10. But um, what I wanted, what we're doing here is over the two-week period from May 1st to 15th, um, I'm doing a video a day and providing responses to five to six uh, submissions of, for relationship advice that have been sent in by um, readers of my blog and or uh, subscribers and visitors to this YouTube channel. So if you have a question, look in the description box for this show and you'll see the link to uh, submit your question. I'm also taking suggestions for topics for the Wednesday night live broadcast, which we are doing, live streams rather, which we are doing every Wednesday night during the month of May. So you see there's a lot going on during the month of May. So let's get started because I have a lot of ground to cover. Letter number one, Dear Deborah. I am married and I've cheated on my wife, oh my God, during a mistrusting period in our lives. I wonder what that means. The problem is that when I was cheating, my erection would not hold up like it did when I slept with my wife. Two out of five times I tried with other women and I did not perform well. I have good duration with my wife but couldn't understand why I had bad duration with the other women. Do you think this is a mind thing? Absolutely. Let me tell you about yourself you trifling piece of shit okay Th this is what happens see so you you know you trying to do this I don't know why you trying to cheat on your wife because it's like you trying to do something that's really not in you to do I don't understand what's going on with you or why you think this is the course of action that you need to take okay so you knew you was a guilt you know you were guilty you knew you were sleazy you knew you was trifling you knew you wasn't shit you knew that you were gonna hurt your marriage you knew you're gonna hurt your wife and see all this is going through your head while you were trying to get busy with this other chick or these other chicks so um, the bottom line is though you know yo Johnson has better sense than you do so it was like oh we don't want to do this and it made sure that you did it and that's all I got to say on that. You need to pay attention. Your body's talking to you and it's trying to tell you something that your stupid brain is not figuring out. But, you know, your body is telling you. Okay. Ooh-wee. Letter number two. I am 54 years old. And this friend that I talked to, or we used to talk, we used to work together. I don't know what this is. Okay. We used to work together in the hospital and we knew each other for a long period of time. But every time we go out, Okay, this person is like half a litter because they kept saying, you know. you who, who writes you know? This is going to be hard for me to read. I'm going to do my best, you guys. Every time we try to go out, we kick it a few times, and that will be it. But we really never had a real relationship. So from time to time, he calls me. And every time he calls, he says we're going to get together. But we never get together, and he always stands me up. And then I have been in a situation when I needed some help, and I had to move. And I asked him if he can help me move, and he told me that he had things to do. Now he still calls me and wants to meet up, but he always stands me up. I just got fed up with him and told him to leave me alone. Stop freaking calling me because you like to play all these head games and my games. I don't have time for it. But he still calls me from time to time, so I block him off my phone and did that. So what do you think I should do? Ooh -wee. First of all, you need to take a class in English. That's what you need to do. Because this letter, with a very little punctuation and written with you knows and and just sounding crazy, it's like it's too hard to follow. And if this is how you write, you need to go back to school, okay? Because you can't write no business letters or anything like this writing like this. That's number one that you need to do. Number two, if you've blocked him, um, how do you know that he's still calling you from time to time? I'm not understanding that. Because see, blocked people, you don't know that they're calling because they're blocked. So I'm confused about how this is working. I may be using the wrong term. But the bottom line is, you set yourself up to be played because when he did that the very first time, 
one time that's all they get okay we're gonna be talking about this on wednesday about these boundaries that you guys just don't freaking have i mean why would you stay involved with a man who treated you like this who stands you up just you know because he wants to and then you still talk to him and still let him set you up for the next downfall and the next and the next and the next and you still answer the phone and you still expect him to come through what's wrong with you he should have been fired. I mean, like, don't call me, motherfucker, forget you know me, lose my number, die, eat shit, all that. That's what he, you should have been saying to him. Because there's no way in this world that, you know, this should have been able to go on this long. You, he should have had one time. And then that was it. You know, you're not married to him. You wasn't, as you say, you never had a real relationship with him. So there was no point in you giving him chance after chance after chance. You don't have no kids with him. You know, there's no reason for you to stay tied to this knucklehead. You know, sometimes women have to make adjustments when the, you know, it's the father of their child. But, you know, those, that kind of behavior, they, they do the same thing to the kids. So at some point, the mother still has to intervene and sit, put up some boundaries. Because he say he's going to, you know, pick them up. He says he's going to take them someplace. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. And then he falls through and the kids are crying. So, you know, as a parent, you, you, you know, you have to intervene on your child's behalf. But you're an adult. So you don't need you 54 years old. And you still, like, let men play these, like, 19-year-old games on you? Mm -mm. so anyway you said you bought you blocked him on your phone but like i said i don't know how you know that he's still calling if he's blocked so that's very confusing to me but that is what you need to do block him on your phone block him on social media uh, block him on your email block him on your fax machine block him whatever ways you can and just move him on out your life because he's a waste of your time letter number three I am engaged to a man I met on the internet <laughs> internet three years ago. In between that time we dated, then just became friends. Almost a year ago, we started dating again. The problem is that he broke up with a woman to be with me, but I found out recently that he is still seeing her. But he tells me that he wants our relationship and soon to be marriage. Am I crazy for staying with him? Yes. I have gotten so many points of view on this that my head is spinning. Please help. And she had the nerve to sign this too much love. Where's all this love? I see you getting dogged the fuck out and sticking around to take more of it. It's like, okay, you know, the more of these letters that I read, the more I read, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, okay, Deborah, what was wrong with you? Why did you not make a video or write a blog post to talk about it on Blog Talk? But then again, maybe I did because there was like a couple hundred shows on there. I don't really remember all the shows I did. But the bottom line is boundaries, boundaries, ladies, boundaries. You have none. And it's like, how do you let somebody treat you like this? By the time he came, you were just friends, okay? Then he tried to come back. No, the door is closed. That, that ship has sailed. That, you know, that play has ended, all that. You just say, no, we're not going to do that. You know, we just be friendly. Um, because this is the thing. It's like, you know, it's Woody Allen, for his perversion, actually made a very good phrase that I like. And he's like, you know, you have to be like a shark. Because sharks only swim forward. You know that? The only time they swim backwards was in that movie, Deep Blue Sea. And those were some specially genetically modified sharks. But, you know, they only swim forward. That's all they do. And that's how you have to be, ladies. You know, if you leave something behind you, something that you don't want anymore, something that's no good, you knew it was messed up when you left it. Okay, why are you going to circle back around and deal with that fucked up thing all over again. What's wrong with you? I'm like, ooh, y'all giving me a headache. I, you gonna turn me into an alcoholic by May 15th. Okay, so basically, let me be put on my advice hat right now. Okay, what you need to do, young woman, is do what I always advise. Pay attention to what a man does and not what he says okay what does he do and if his words and his matches act, words and actions match up then you got a winner but if he's saying one thing and doing another or doing one thing but saying another then you have a problem and that's what's going on here his mouth is saying you know commitment and marriage and long term and all the stuff but his actions are showing he's just still a player and you know he's playing with you and he's playing with her and probably a couple of more people because he's on the internet who knows what he's doing and where he's dibbling and dabbling but by saying that he's quote engaged see he's keeping you like 
nose deep close to him. He might be engaged to the other woman too. So, you know, you don't know. I just see this, you know, you think about it. Is this really the kind of of involvement that a man should have with you if he's talking about being your husband? Okay, usually people start to take on a persona of a husband and wife, you know, before they actually walk down the aisle. Even though technically, like I always say, they are still single. They start embracing the connected connectedness and the uh, the emotional ties and the fidelity and things that they're going to have as a married couple. They kind of take that step first and then the marriage comes and then they're already on that path. They just, you know, expand it after they get married. But what you're doing is playing this, um, you know, this weak, confused damsel in distress role when everything that you need to make a, a decision that is intelligent and, and in your best interest, you put in the letter. Okay, you put it, yeah, I'm sitting here looking at it. So, you know, don't be trying to play the victim and asking like, you know, why is he doing this to me? I don't know what to do. Just like the lady yesterday, you know what to do. You just don't want to do it. You know, and this kind of silliness really just gets on my nerves. Okay, letter number four. I have watched some of your videos and I think you are an incredibly smart woman and a great advisor. Yes, I'm all that. Forgive me for asking, but I had great faith that you can help me. I am a 24-year-old male. I am white, skinny, and short. Damn, dude, like a white pygmy. I live in a third world country here in South America. Most women here are black or dark skinned. I find them all beautiful, but they don't give me any attention. They only have eyes for tall, strong, aggressive, black or dark skinned men. Hmm. It is a deep-rooted cultural aspect of my country that strong, tall black males are seen as attractive slash handsome. Do you know of any way in which I can love and be loved by any girl here? Sorry for the bad English. I am still learning. I await your reply. Goodbye and God bless you. Well, we could have left that part out. but um, A third world country here in South America. Most of the women here are black or dark skinned. I find them all beautiful, but they don't give me any attention. Have you ever, okay, you're skinny. Have you ever thought about lifting weights and kind of, you know, bulking up a little bit? Um, running tends to take your muscles off and it makes you very lean. You would have to do some weight training. And, you know, to do those, you don't have to have, I used to be a trainer, you don't have to have, like, you know, belong to a gym or anything like that. You can get some, they have like adjustable weights that you can make dumbbells or, you know, you can use them side by side and use them like, you know, do chest press and everything. Um, all kinds of exercises you can do with those. You can also do squats, you know, holding onto like a big rock, which is equivalent of like a kettlebell or a, a, a medicine ball. But, you know, it's a rock and they have rocks in different sizes. I mean, you know, there's so much you can do just with the stuff around. You can do pull-ups on a tree branch, dude. You know, you don't need a pull-up bar. Um, stuff like that to develop your back and shoulders and your biceps. Um, you can do lunges. You can do, um, you know, reverse lunges, side lunges. Um, you can do jump squats. All kinds of stuff you can do body weight or with dumbbells and stuff that you do not have to join a gym. That's my first suggestion, okay, because you can't do nothing about your skin color, and you can probably get a little tan maybe, um, but you're not going to turn, you know, dark skin or black, And but you can make the best of what you got. So you can, you know, get a little, get in the sun a little bit, brown up a little bit. Um, you can do something about the skinny, you know, eat more and lift some weights. You can't really do too much about your height. Um, but they, I mean, you got to give a woman something to look at. So, I mean, you know, can you do something with your hair maybe? Can you put an earring or two in? Can you, um, I mean, there has to be something about you that is attractive. And what you have to do is magnify that. Like say you have beautiful eyes and, you know, nice eyelashes or something that, you know, maybe get a little goatee beard or something that's going to bring attention to your face away from the smallness of your body and they can see the handsomeness of your face, you know, or at least the masculine look. Um, you know, it's really hard for me to say without having seen a picture of you. 
you know, I kind of have to guess, but these are just some general things I can think about um, as far as attracting the, the women because of the, their you know, mindset that they prefer a black man. That's unfortunately the majority of, of black women all over the world. They like, you know, they prefer to be with a man that looks like them. That is changing somewhat, you know, that's, especially in the United States and over in, in the UK. Uh, there are more and more interracial relationships with black men and uh, white, I'm sorry, black women and men of other races, you know, English men, French, German, Chinese, Korean, um, you know, Scottish, Irish, all kind of stuff. I mean, we have Irish in my family. My great great grandfather is Irish, so um, so you know it can happen, but it's gonna definitely be an uphill battle for you. But those are my things to start with. Okay, you're gonna have to also look at your wardrobe. You know what what you don't. You gotta try to make up for what you lack and a visual presentation to draw their attention to well you know he might not be black but he's really nice looking you know he's a funny he's personable i mean you got to give women something to draw them into you like how we have like a mouse trap we put cheese in it right because we want the mice to come you know so we trap them in a trap that's you got to kind of think about what you're going to do to set your your cheese okay it's going to be your cheese and then uh, you get, get at least a couple of dates and then write me back and you can go over what you know what worked and what didn't but start with those things and it's i'm sure it's going to take you about three months or so to really make a noticeable physical change with your uh, muscle structure but you know eat more eat more uh, protein and more carbs you know eat fruits vegetables grains like you know good rice potatoes if they have them down there i don't know what they have to eat um you know the bread fruits I mean all that kind of stuff eat eat that kind of stuff you need more calories if you're gonna bulk up but yeah wait you know do this about three months or so three four months and then write me back and tell me what your progress has been like and what's changed and include a picture next time okay letter number five I currently have a situation regarding my auntie oh I am 5'8 and weigh 125 pounds oh you slim every time I see her she is always telling me I am picking up weight which I am not I've been wearing the same size pants for three years. It's really getting on my nerves, but I'm trying to be patient about it because she's my aunt. I sometimes feel she is jealous of me or something. I have my own car, a good job, a nice home, and she still stays home with her parents, my grandparents. I don't know, and I don't want to jump to conclusions, but how do I tell her to stop it without disrespecting her? Okay, your aunt is a bitch. Okay, let's just put it, let's just be blunt. And I'm going to say, okay, you don't say how old you are, but if you have your own home, a nice home, your own car, and a really good job and stuff, I'm going to say you're at least in your late 20s, early 30s, right? So you doing all of these big things, and I'm sure you're way younger than your aunt, but she's still living with, with at home with her parents. Yes, she's envious of you. I don't know if I want to use a strong word like jealous, but she's definitely envious. But my thing is this. And once I got grown, because I had a I had out with an aunt and out with one of my aunts and one of my uncles. I cussed both of them motherfuckers out. My ex-mother-in-law cussed her ass out. I don't give a fuck. You do anything to, that disrespects me, you try to throw some shade at me, you try to do anything to demean, degrade, name call, you know, anything to lower, to attempt to lower my opinion of myself because you don't feel good about yourself, your ass is getting cussed out. I don't give a fuck who you are. And, you know, me and my daddy went through it. We didn't talk for weeks after I cussed his ass out. And so, you know, and I learned how to do it from him, so there's nothing he could say. But, you know, we made up. But he just had to get told that one good time. It's like, you know, I'm an adult now. And this is the same thing you need to tell your aunt. You know, family... Um, it, it ties you to people but it doesn't give them any special privileges to berate or demean you because you're related to them that's what you need to be real clear on okay if anything she should treat you with more respect because you're family instead of less but see she she got some shit twisted so um, it's 
time for to put your clown suit on. So the next time you get to go over to your grandparents' house or if there's some family event or something where she's there and everybody else is around and she says something off towards towards you, that's when you need to loud talk her ass and say, you know, why are you always talking about what me picking up some weight? The only thing I'm picking up that's heavy is my paycheck, bitch. That's what I'm picking up that's heavy. So, you know, you because you living in a hut with your grandparents like you still 16 and I own my own shit, got my own car, got my own program rolling and you don't have one. Don't be trying to throw shade at me because you're failing miserably, just like you failed at life. See, I would hurt her feeling so fucking bad, but she would never talk to me again. And that would be good because then, you know, because when she opened her mouth, it's some dumb shit. So, you know, sometimes, you know, just because you related to somebody, that doesn't mean that they, you know what they say? All skin folk ain't kin folk or something like that, the phrase goes. This one here is uh, is just too much. So, you know, that's, that's how I would handle it. I'm not saying that you have to be like me. But she definitely needs to get told. So you just find your own words. But see me, I'm going to just go for your fucking jugular. And I'm going to just tear you down right in front of everybody. And let everybody know what kind of bitch you are and how jealous you are and how insecure you are and how low down in life lifeless you are because you don't have a fucking life you're still living with your grand with your parents like a big dummy and your ass is old as hell Mm-mm. Nah, she would get clowned okay and the last letter because i decided to do six today she says my boyfriend of two years says that he wants to see other people and he has been keeping it a secret for a month or so. Whoa! I noticed that he was treating me differently, being kind of mean. So I asked him if he wants to break up with, if he wants me to break up with him, and he said no. But I have been asking him over and over if he loves me, and he said yes. I asked if he was happy with me, and he says he doesn't have anyone to compare me to. And I said, well, what then? And he said that he was concentrating on his drawing, and he didn't mean to say that. He was supposed to be talking about it the next day, but we never did. So this past Sunday, it all came out that he doesn't have the same feelings for me. I asked him if he was still in love with me, and he said no. That was a shock. I think someone may be telling him things like he can't take care of me and that he shouldn't be in a relationship. He was my first, and I was his first. He wants to see what else is out there, I guess, but I don't feel the same. He feels like we might get married, and he doesn't want to marry me and regret that he didn't date around. What should I do? He is confused, and now so am I. Wow. I'm going to say this. Neither one of you are confused. He is just trying to figure out the easiest way to get out of this shit with with causing you as little pain as possible. But the fact that he's already started fucking around, I mean, it's a wrap. So no matter what you don't want, it's not, what you don't want is irrelevant here. He's the one with the power because you gave it to him by asking him, well, do you want me to break up with you? Do you still love me? Do, what, what, you know, what, what are we going to do? I'm confused. All this old shit. Like you just, again, no fucking boundaries. Why is this the overwhelming theme with you guys? Okay. You don't ask a man what he wants. You tell him what you want. And then you, if he's not going to give it to you, then you say, well, bye, motherfucker. And just, you know, move on to the next person. There's so many men out here, and most of them are just as stupid as him. So it's not like you have to stay with this stupid one. You can go get a different stupid one. That's a different kind of stupid. At least it'll be new stupid. You know what I mean? So, you know, he wants out. There's nothing you can do about it. He wants out. He's already taken the steps out. He's told you he don't love you no more. He told you he's fucking around with some other woman. And yet you ask him, do you want me to break up with you? Don't you think that those are all signs and symptoms of somebody who don't want to be with you no more? Wow. I'm like, what are these people doing with their daughters? You're not teaching your girls nothing. Another thing I want to point out, you kept emphasizing that he's your first. He's your first. And, I mean, just think back to the first time you ate ice cream. Did that stop you from eating more ice cream? Trying different flavors of ice cream? Gelato? Ice milk? Ice cream? Milkshakes with ice cream? I mean, all kind of variations on the theme of ice cream. Did that stop you? Because you, you know, your first, you had your first ice cream cone? See, it's the same thing with dick. Okay, you women, you just put too much on it. Okay, it's your first one. Big whoop de doo That's just, you know, that's just like, okay, we on the path now. Let's go. Let's see, you know. Let's get it. What's out there? And, uh, you know, my thing is, 
it, okay, the first is, you know, that's great. I mean, it's like a milestone. You'll never forget your first lover. But does that mean he's the best? Does it mean he's the only? Does that mean he's the last? It means none of those things. It just means it's the first. Like I said, like you had your first ice cream cone. Like you went to first grade. I mean, so? So it was your first. Big whoop to do. You put too much on it. It's just it's just dick, okay? It's like it's no big deal. And you got it from a man who's out telling you that he doesn't love you and he doesn't want to be with you anymore. He wants to see what else is out there. You know, you have no choice in this matter. You talking about well, it's not what you want. It doesn't nobody gives a fuck what you want. He's telling you what he's going to do and is already doing. So your your vote in this situation is you don't have one, okay? Dude is gonna do what he wanna do. So what you could do is um, your best thing to do. I'm looking at this. It's so sad. The best thing you could do is uh, take charge of yourself. <coughs> take charge of yourself and kick him to the curb and move on. That's what you should best. That's your best do deal. Your best decision. Um, and then you don't know, block him. Make sure you don't be calling him and whining about, you know, you don't understand. And don't let him call you whining about what, what he thought and his mistakes and all this stuff. When he calls you, because he's always going to, because, you know, he's going to realize how stupid he is. But, you know, you cannot, like I just said in the previous letter, circle back around to some old bullshit. Okay? Because if you got a man who wants, his, his number one goal is to fuck around, well... I mean, when does that end? I mean, just because he did it with one woman, that's not going to be enough. He's going to want to fuck around with two, three, five more. So he has something else to compare it to. That's his goal right now. He's not thinking about you. He's not thinking about your emotions. He's not thinking about breaking your heart. Nothing. He's thinking about his dick. So there's, you can't fight that. That's just the way that it is. So, um, you know, just block all avenues to him contacting you and wasting your time some more. Don't you dare fall back into this trap thinking, oh, yeah, that was my first. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just move the fuck on. Because this is my thing. It's like, okay, so this, so you get this dick, and this dick was, like, really good. Okay, well, then you get some new dicks. Like, oh, well, damn, that was this. Oh, he knew all kind of new tricks. And then you get the one after that. It's like, oh, my God, what in the world? The other ones was, like, nothing compared to this. And then you get another one. It's like, God, oh, this motherfucker's is a bomb. Okay, then you get the next one, and you see stars and galaxies go by. And, stuff. and then the one after that, okay, you might li like it so much, and you might like him so much, you give your heart, you give your body, and the next, you know, you're married with you know, a couple of kids and trying to figure out what happened. <laughs> But that's how it goes. You know, that's life. So don't get stuck on any one man unless he's everything that you want. You know, other than that, just, you know, take it for, as it comes. It's a good time. And when that good time is over, roll out. Okay? It's like I'm getting ready to do. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye. We just had a live stream that was so much fun. It's the second one done on this channel. and something I've been wanting to do for a while. So what I decided to do since we had such a good time and it was... You know, it's like you're in, you're out. I get to be myself. Everybody, is, we all laugh together. It's a good time. And, it's you know, vid videos is great, but that's pretty much one-sided. I like the interaction that we get to have when you guys are there with me. So what I decided to do is uh, work on getting the live stream thing going by setting up every Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. for the next month, like the rest of May we'll do this and see how it goes see I'm not gonna commit to a long time because you know me but I think it will be good you know it's gonna be it's gonna be good to try it so every Wednesday mark your calendar set yourself a reminder on your phone be right here to be at the start of it because you don't want to miss some and we'll talk about oh, different topics um, from 6 to 7 p.m. now what I'm not gonna do is make like an event because I don't I don't know what I'm doing and something happened and every time I try to go into the event that I created I end up having to make a new live stream so you know what we're just gonna do that so just look for me on Wednesdays from 6 to 7 p.m. if you're my friend on Facebook you'll get to see what the topic is there but I I'm not gonna put, put anything here we're just 
you just be here at six o'clock next Wednesday, and then you'll find out what the topic is. All right. So I look forward to seeing you guys. It should be fun. Send in your questions or uh, suggestions for topics to survivingdating at gmail.com. That's survivingdating, all one word, at gmail.com. And you just might have your topic selected. 